Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and as you probably know I am the Boeing 707 captain. I promised to you to speak about the IRS system, it's time to start. Let's go. Bum, bum. The abbreviation IRS stands for Inertial Reference System and you may find it not only on Boeing 737 but you may also find it for example on Boeing 747. There are three independent IRS systems. On Boeing 737 we have two independent IRS systems which are very crucial and they provide with very important information like airplane attitude, true and magnetic heading, acceleration, vertical speed, ground speed, track, present position and wind data to appropriate airplane system. IRS outputs are independent on external navigation aids. However, we need the external navigation aids to update the position of the airplane or we need the GPS. As you probably know, I used to fly the ATR 42 and 72 and on that airplanes we hadn't had any IRS systems, but we had the gyros and we had the GPS update for navigation. On Boeing 737 everything is more complex and sophisticated because even with the loss of GPS signal the airplane may find its position. And actually there are no any GPS update on older versions of Boeing 737 Classic or for example on Boeing 767 we have the same picture. So how does this system work? Actually, I'm not a technician, my friends, so I'll give you the information that I know. There are laser gyros inside the IRS uh, box and also there are some accelerometers. So that system measures the aircraft rotation on the ground. That is why we need to perform the alignment every time we want to fly somewhere for the aircraft to find its position. So basically, this system measures the airplane rotation speed on the Earth and also it measures the gravity. If you enter the geographic coordinates during the alignment phase, the system will understand your position and will calculate the aircraft precise position, then it flies. But if your flight is quite long, there still may be some error accumulation for the system. So that is why RS uses the NAV update. As I say to you, if you have the GPS as on Boeing 707NG and Boeing 707 MAX, there will be constant update from this system if the GPS signal is good. If you have no GPS signal, there still may be the update from navigation aids like VR or DME. Pum, pum. Let's speak about the IRS system components. First of all, it is Air Data Inertial Reference Unit. ADRU. We have two of them on Boeing 737 and that box processes the information from the detectors from accelerometers and also it receives the signal from pitots, uh, from static boards and then processed it to DU uh, display units. The two ADRUs are the brains of the IRS system so they provide the inertial position and track data to the flight management computer and also they provide attitude, altitude and airspeed data to display system. Each ADRU has an IRS section and an air data section. Let's speak about the controls and indications we have uh, inside the cockpit. On aft overhead panel we have inertial system display a unit ISDU. It is only one unit for two IRSs. There are two segmented windows display data on the top. Data for IRS selected with system display. So here's the knob, selector sorry, and you select the information you'll have on the top on that two displays. If you set the display selector to test, it will initiate the test, but it is possible only during the alignment period of IRS. It is disabled in flight or ATT mode. How it's going? Well, all lights will just illuminate for around 3 seconds and it is normal thing. In addition, we have the master caution and IRS light initiator on panel illuminate for 3 seconds as well. Then all lights illuminate for 8 seconds 
the fault messages generated by the internal self test next we have tkgs position it's a track ground speed the left window displays the true track and uh, the right window displays the ground speed in knots the next is p pose and basically it presents the present position of the airplane where you can see the latitude and longitude of the airplane the next position is more understandable and it's called wind where you can find the wind information on the left window displays the true wind direction and the right window displays the wind speed in knots on the ground it shows 100 knots and it is normal and the last one we have here is hdgsts it's heading status the left window displays the true heading the right window displays any applicable IRU maintenance codes uh, last two digits during the IRS alignment the right window also displays the minutes remaining until the alignment is complete for 70 minutes alignment 15 shows in the IRS display for first three minutes after three minutes the display counts down to zero the full IRS alignment usually takes from 5 to 15 minutes depends on airplane latitude if you align the IRS system near to equator that is five minutes because of the high acceleration speed relative to the center of the earth here in Ukraine it takes seven minutes usually pum pum just below the display selector we have a system display selector and uh, that thing allows us to select between two irs's uh, that we have on board so very very simple that is why we have one inertial system display unit but we are able to see the parameters for two irs's on the right we have the keyboard it provides the manual irs entry of present position or magnetic heading the keyboard functions are independent from the position of the display selector and the system display selector and you also can use the mcdu multi-purpose control display unit to enter the present position for the irs as you can see on that keyboard we have an alpha case like w and h s e it's west north east south and h stands for heading basically you press it then you are in att mode to enter the heading or you can enter it through the mcdu on the bottom we have two of the keys it's ent it stands for entry and key clr stands for clear and you can see some of the lights well you set the coordinates and um, the light just flashes then the eight entries are being Kate. so if you press it you enter so it's very similar to execute button on mcd the clear k lights illuminate if after entry the system determines the data to be unreasonable so you need to clear the data and enter it once again maybe you need to correct it and also it uh, illuminates if uh, two or more maintenance codes cost it to eliminate as a pilot you need to call for maintenance the maintenance will perform the test and identify that what is wrong with your irs system all right my friends here's the irs mode selector unit and on the top we have the big light it's called gps and it stands for the gps actually on uh, boeing 77 and g and uh, max we have the constant gps update for the irs system so the errors uh, of the systems are very low compared to old versions as on boeing 77 classic well actually there were some of the boeing 77 classics also with the gps update speaking about the light well it eliminate on recall if one hardware of the gps will fail if one sensor for example fails it will eliminate just on recall with a dual gps failure gps master caution and irs enunciator eliminate immediately then you push and release either master caution light the master caution and irs enunciator light go out but the gps light stays on the two align lights are here to show you the condition of irs system alignment if they eliminate steady wide it means that the process of alignment is ongoing 
or you select the switch the iris switch to att or you select the switch to off if those lights are flashing it means something is wrong with your alignment it can be the aircraft movement so the airplane movement during the alignment it can be the strong wind that causes those lights to flash so the realignment period will start after the airplane motion stops the significant difference between the previous and entered position and also the position of the airplane was not entered so if you select the switches to nav during the normal alignment cycle you need to enter the position of the airplane if you didn't do it the align light would start to flash the align lights uh, will extinguish only after the alignment cycle is completed in nav mode or attitude information is available heading information is also available following the manual entry in att mode or then the iris is fully off the on dc lights well to speak about those lights firstly we need to speak about the iris power supply the irs's can operate on either ac or dc power the ac dc power supply system <laughs> it's good we have a backup from dc it means we have a backup from the battery the left irs is normally powered from the ac standby bus and the right irs from the ac transfer bus too if ac power is not normal either or both irs system automatically switch to backup dc power from the switch hold battery bus backup dc power to the right irs is automatically terminated if the ac power is not restored within the five minutes it means that we'll have on dc light on left irs constantly but on right it will eliminate for five minutes and later on the supply for the right iris will stop it will be terminated so yes only the left iris system has the unlimited time battery supply until it is depleted the fault lines basically show that fault which affects the respective irs uh, has been detected that's it nothing more you need to call for maintenance and they would solve the problem or you need to follow the cure rage if you are flying the airplane the dc fire light shows that dc power for the related irs is not normal if other lights are extinguished the irs is operating normally on ac power but if something went wrong with ac power and you see this light it means that the battery is unable to supply the irs or it's been depleted usually less than 18 volts the irs mode selectors well we can speak quite a lot about them but i think it's better for you to see on practice let's go pam pam now i will show you the process of iris alignment on real boeing 737 airplane and now if you want to start the alignment of irs you just press you just select sorry the position now straight away so you bypass the line on the seat is the check of the uh, switch hot better bus to see supplying the system and now it's on the line it should be like that if they will flash that means two things the first one that you need to enter the coordinates and the second thing that it's unable to set the position and sometimes we have the position disagree here on multi-purpose control display unit we have the position disagree if the disagreement is more than four miles uh, there should be the boxes oh no yes so set iris position here we go to the next page and we have active gps position because we have gps sensors all working no matter if irs is on or off so here we take the position in the scratch pad go back and set it as active position and also cross check with last position as you can see there are the same now it will take us several minutes here we go to heading cell yes and heading status sort and here we have five minutes for the iris iris system to align and then we'll have all the screens the navigation display the pfd 
they should work. There you go. Have uh, attitude indicator. Everything is working well here, and here we have the aircraft position, the navigation display. Basically, all we need to perform the flight. This is the normal alignment, my friends, between 78 degrees 15 minutes north or south. If you don't have a lot of time in your transit airport, you can do the quick realignment. And now I'll just show you how. Okay, guys, how to perform the quick realignment of IRS system? Here we set the align, align, and check those two align lights. After that, check the position init page. Uh, and here we have the squares, as you can see, many, many squares. We just put the coordinates once again, and yes, the airport, by the way, but this is for the joy purpose video, and later back to nav again. This will eliminate the ground speed error and will precisely set you the geographic coordinates for your current position, but for more precision if you have the time you need to make the full realignment you need to do the full realignment of IRS system if we speak about this ATT mode it will provide only the attitude and the heading information so firstly if you have problems with nav mode you set it to attitude like this and check the align switches it's in flight if your nav mode is not working and here you can see the dashes for heading so you need to input the heading and you need to maintain the straight lower flight uh, according to your standby artificial horizon or if you have that horizon just here as you see the artificial horizon just appeared here and if we put H button and we put the heading 295 you see and enter sorry enter you see it appeared here so it's the reserve mode for you to have the artificial horizon and the head information in flight but then you fly in this reserve mode you need to update your head information regularly here you can get it from here it is not very precise flight but still you'll have some information so if you set the IRS system off like this, you can see the online. And I don't know why your Denver is automatically switched off in this case. That's the connection uh, with this off position of IRS and your Denver. So now we just wait. It should take around 30 seconds. Then they extinguish and IRS is off. Pam pam. Okay. The iris transfer switch. It is very simple thing, my friends. It has three positions, uh, both on left, normal, and both on right. Both on left switches the gyrus source attitude and heading to left iris. The right, the both on right position is vice versa, as you understood. A normal position. The left flight instrument source is left ADRU, the right flight instrument source is right ADRU. Everything is very simple. If I speak about the RS system reliability, well, my friends, I have never had any faults of that system uh, and I have never heard of faults, at least in my airline and I consider this system to be very redundant and reliable. But you may have some of the issues during the alignment, especially in windy conditions. If you have strong wind, the airplane is shaking and that shaking actually may stop the alignment process. So for that you actually need to tow or push back your airplane nose to the wind and that may help to avoid this situation my friends i know that this video will not have many views but i will continue to make this content in addition to my vlogs to my flights because i know some part of my subscribers would like to see this kind of videos 
and what you need to do to support my channel to support me is just to follow the awesome guy checklist first just uh, like this video and then subscribe to my channel after that uh, ring the bell whatever it means thank you very much for watching this video and have a great time Pam, pam.